by now. And very importantly as well, because it's gonna be recorded, we will send you a copy of the recording, which will be posted on our YouTube channel. And you will have access to a copy of the materials that will be presented here today. I think you know me very well. My name is Yvonne Chouquet. I'm the Executive Director for Panama Aquatics. And it's my pleasure to introduce Maureen Cross, our president. Thank you, Maureen, all yours. Thank you so much, Yvonne, and welcome everyone. Um, I am so very pleased to see many of you from our aquatic family, and I understand that it's a very difficult and busy time of the year. So to have you here joining us um, only is an indication to me that you are committed to developing and working for aquatics, not only locally in your own federations, but for the region and especially for the continent. Um, so thank you for that. Um, Yvonne, if you wanna start the PowerPoint presentation. Yes. Um, so the idea behind this uh, town hall meeting, informative meeting is to uh, celebrate what we did in 2022 briefly but also to see where we are going from here. As all of you are well aware, we have been doing a lot of work um, over the past um, I don't know, two, three years, and especially these last couple of months to ensure that the future of aquatics in the American continent can continue to grow, that we're moving forward and joining FINA in its quest to make aquatics the best sports in the world. So before we get into the agenda, I want to take a little moment to emphasize that everything that Panam Aquatics has accomplished so far and everything that we are planning to do is only possible because of teamwork. Um, with the support coordination skills and tireless efforts of our executive director, Yvonne Shaker, we have received um, cooperation, efforts, dedication from all sorts of people from our continent. Yvonne, if you can put on the next slide. Um, we have athletes, we have retired athletes, we have people that have nothing to do with aquatics. We have officials, just volunteers, parents, um, people that are willing to give of themselves and that have you know, contacted us to be part of our organization. So to all of them, I want to say thank you. To each of you, the 45 national federations that we have, to the member of all of our discipline committees and our specialized committees, to the zone leadership, to the six FINA bureau members that we have. Each and every one, thank you. And without what you're doing, we cannot do anything. We are a team and that is the only way we can continue to grow. So the agenda for today, as we are only a few days away from Congress, the very important FINA Congress in Melbourne, um, we would like to give FINA President, Captain Al Musalam, an opportunity to say hello to you. And immediately following Mr. Uh, or President, um, Al Musalam, we will have Mr. Dale Newberger, FINA treasurer, also um, saying a few words about what's going to be happening in Congress. Um, both the captain and um, Dale are traveling to Melbourne as we speak. So they are joining us by video and not in person. My dear friends and colleagues of Pan Am Aquatics, I am very happy to join you today in your meeting and put in the record 
my deepest appreciation and thanks to the Pan Am Aquatics family. Your hard work demonstrates your commitment to develop the aquatic sport, not only in your continent, but also worldwide. The FINA family will assemble in the beautiful city of Melbourne, Australia, soon to celebrate the FINA World Short Course Championship and also together during the Extraordinary General Assembly where we all will discuss and approve the new name and the logo of FINA and also the FINA Constitution. In this regard, I would like to thank Pan Am Aquatics family and each individual of you who contributed in the past 18 months for the FINA reforms. I wish you a very successful meeting today. I'm looking forward to see you soon in good health in Melbourne. Good evening, I'm Dale Newberger, FINA Treasurer, and it's really a pleasure to be able to address this group this evening. I'm very sorry that I can't be with you on Zoom live as I'm on my way to Melbourne for the FINA World Swimming Championships 25 meters. And I know many of your swimmers will be competing there over the course of the next week and hope for great results for all of the national federations within Pan Am Aquatics. It's my pleasure to be with you and at the invitation of President Maureen Crows. And I am thankful for this opportunity to address you on a few issues related to not only the FINA Constitution, but the activities that will take place in Melbourne, specifically the Extraordinary Congress on December 12th. As many of you know, when FINA President Hussein Al-Masalam was elected in June of 2021, he made a commitment to modernize FINA, and most particularly to do that through its constitution, which really had not been modified to a large extent since its founding in 1908. So there was much to do. And he put together a strong reform committee that included two individuals from the Americas, Maureen Crows and Chris Brierton from the United States. And they were part of a small group that reviewed over more than a year opportunities to change, revise, and modernize the FINA Constitution. And I think they did a great job. And in October, the FINA Bureau had a chance to review the work of this reform committee that had taken place over more than a year and had been the substance of great number of meetings and a good deal of activity over, during that period of time. I want to say to you that I think the Constitution, as put forward by the Reform Committee and later approved by the FINA Bureau, is an excellent document. And I hope that each of you will have a chance to review it, review also some of the main contents of the Constitution, and give your approval, whether in person or via Zoom, at the Extraordinary Congress next week. I think it's important for Panama Aquatics and each of its national federations to understand the changes to the Constitution, what it means for FINA, what it means for Panama Aquatics, and what it means for your national federation. Most basically, I think one of the key elements of the revised Constitution is greater importance for the Continental Associations. And Panama Aquatics has done, in particular, a very active program over these set last several years and will have an even greater role going forward. And I think that's good because it gives each of you a more localized point of contact than the FINA office in Lausanne. Uh, the FINA office and its employees have done a terrific job. It's a great staff and a great group of young people in particular who work on development and many of the activities that directly interact with each of you. But this opportunity for Pan Am Aquatics to have an even greater role to bring together, coordinate, and create greater collaborations 
among the national federations of the Americas, I think is a great opportunity for us and I'm fully supportive. One of the other big changes to the constitution is a substantially increased number of individuals on the FINA Bureau, going from 26 currently to 40. And I know for many nonprofit organizations and NGOs around the world, there's a desire to get smaller as boards of directors and of governing bodies. But our president, and I think uh, with the, the full approval of the reform committee, wanted to expand participation, wanted to make sure there were more individuals who had a chance to have their direct voice in Athena governance, and also to have a broader representation, both geographically and by gender. I'm very pleased to be able to say to you that at minimum, the new FINA Bureau will have one third of its members who are women. And Panama Aquatics has been a leader over the years in this area, in particular in gender representation. Uh, Ms. Crows is the first Continental Association president in FINA history uh, who's a woman. And that's a, that's a good distinction for Panama Aquatics. And we've also had outstanding representation within the Americas currently with Cheryl Gibson and Veronica Stanham. But we'll have even more. We'll have two more women who will represent the Americas. And I think this gives us a chance not only for um, greater representation, but also to be a leader among continental associations around the world. I think you will see a number of other areas of the Constitution that are refinements and ways to refresh and bring greater currency to the, uh, to the Constitution and to our governance. One of those ways also is through an expanded athletes committee, uh, an elected athletes committee by and large. And I'm proud to say that the chairman of the athletes committee is Ali Atkinson from Jamaica, which gives us additional representation beyond the nine members of the Bureau who will come from the Americas. Ali represents as the chairman, an additional seat on the FINA Bureau. And that's excellent for uh, Pan Am Aquatics and for the Americas. I know that there will be a number of questions that you may have about the constitution and I hope that Maureen and her colleagues are going to be able to answer those very um, capably over the next hour or so during this Zoom conversation. Um, but I think it's a, it's a very important step for us. Uh, we have made great progress under the leadership of President Hussein al-Masalam and Executive Director Brent Nowicki. Uh, it's been an amazing 18 months in terms of the enthusiasm, the vitality, and just the general direction uh, that FINA has taken over this period of time. We have in this year uh, great opportunities for new sites for our events. And you've seen a, a great FINA World Swimming Championships junior level in Lima. And we'll see the World Championship short course in Melbourne, Australia. And we haven't been in Australia since 2007. So a great deal of vitality. And I think the other key thing that I want to say to you is that Panama Aquatics has been a very active participant in the development program over the years. Since its formation in 2009, no Continental Association has been more active and more engaged in the development program than Panama Aquatics. And each of you is to be congratulated for that. The development program will be expanded. I've had a chance to review the direction for 2023 and 2024, and it is really exciting, the opportunities that are coming to you that will enhance your ability to serve the athletes and to make sure that our sport grows and prospers. It's an exciting time. In Melbourne, there will be an opportunity of at least a two hour block of time to meet directly with the principals, the key leadership in the FINA office in Lausanne 
for the FEMA development program. I hope you'll take the opportunity. The program is significantly expanded, has a chance to give you additional resources, assets, opportunities that have never been there before. And I can say this with great pride. There is no Continental Association, with the, with the exception of, the, uh, of FIFA, that is giving more support to its national federations than FINA, and I should say international federation. FINA's development program will have a $10 million commitment in 2023, wow. $12.5 million commitment in 2024. And the expanded program gives us the greatest uh, scope of development program of any international federation, as I say, with the exception of FIFA. We can be proud of that, but we also have to take good advantage of it. So I know you'll have a great meeting. I give great commendation to the current leadership of Pan Am Aquatics, done a terrific job, and the communication has been excellent. And that's evidenced by your opportunity this evening. So I wish you well uh, this evening. I wish your swimmers great success in Melbourne and a terrific holiday season and an even more successful 2023 than ever before. Thank you and good night. Thank you to President um, Al Musalam and Treasurer Newberger for your um, video message. And um, as uh, Dale pointed out, we will have the opportunity for those of you that are present in Melbourne to connect and talk face to face. Please take those opportunities. You will learn so much and connecting with somebody on a personal level will always be better than through Zoom or by a phone call. So you've heard me talk a lot about our mission to create a vibrant aquatic community. The word vibrant is basically meaning full of life and energy. And that's what we would like to see for everybody. Every single one of your 45 national federation, the six disciplines and the master's discipline, we would like to see um, activity. We'd like to see progress. Just basically have a vibrant community. So based upon the results of the surveys that we did with all of you, with the meetings that we've had over the past years, the following three areas that you see on your screen were identified as being the most important to assist you to create that vibrant um, community in your area. We will need quality or competitive events for our athletes. We need to have resources for education and development for all of our stakeholders. That means the coaches, that means the officials, that means the leadership, and it also means the athletes. And lastly, we need to have a network of, again, that word teamwork. We need to collaborate with one another. We need to learn from each other, and we need to be partners in this endeavor. So here is a vibrant recap talking about the first event, the um, competitive events. We were able to uh, put together this exciting video of our 2022 events.
obviously looking at that video, you would think that we needed professional people to put that together. And yes, these people that are doing it are professional, but they are volunteers who have been helping our uh, organization. So special thank you to David Caranco and um, Kira Hooverts, who David did obviously all the editing. He is the video expert and Kira put together the script for this um, awesome video. Um, so a few months ago, we started with meetings or actually our discipline committees were meeting with representatives of each of your national federations. The objective was for us to understand the different needs and differences in levels of each of you specific to the discipline that you develop. We were pleased to see that many federations participated. So we have a good sense of now of what our region needs. So what we are doing now is putting together this calendar for the next four years. And on your screen, you can see that we have big plans, but we need you, we need your assistance. All of those yellow highlighted events are going to be up for bid. And we expect that you will all jump on this opportunity to get involved and host one of Pan Am Aquatics events. The meetings with these um, representatives of the disciplines will continue because obviously as time progresses, changes will happen. So if we can move on to the next slide, I'm going to go briefly through each of the disciplines. Um, for artistic swimming, we will be hosting our 2023 event in the United States of America. We're working very closely with um, the CEO, Adam Andrasco of United States Artistic Swimming to find out the dates and the location of the event. It will be in August and we hope that we will be able to announce the location really soon. After 2023, we will have a Pan Am Aquatic event every year. It will be in August and it will feature the categories that are that of that moment need the attention. It may be all of the categories like you see, or it may be a few and not all. Then for diving, we will be having this year, the September, in September, the junior championships. We are still looking for a host for the junior championships in September. After 2023, we will be alternating junior and senior events. We are hoping that the senior events can be collaborations with a FINA event, which will obviously raise the level of the competition and make it much more exciting for both the athletes and the host. For high diving, uh, let me first wind, uh, reverse a little bit here. As you are well aware, we just initiated high diving officially in Pan Am Aquatics. We have installed the first ever high diving committee, which is chaired by Mr. Mitch Geller from Canada. And just last week in Montreal at the FINA Junior Diving Championship, this committee met and are in the process of presenting us their plans and wishes for high diving. But one of the things we can tell you is that we are looking for beach festivals. If you are able to put on a high diving, a beach water polo and an open water swimming event in the same venue at the same time, let us know. We are um, convinced that a combination featuring those three disciplines will be a huge success for participation. The next one is masters. Now, obviously we just um, are just this past summer in um, July and we had a very successful masters championship in um, Medellin, Colombia. For 2024, 
the host is already set, it will be in Trinidad and Tobago. The dates are right there on your screen. In 2026, Argentina will be the host. In January of 2024, we will open the bids for the next Masters Championship in 2028. Open water. We will be having, if we can put the hosts together, six series of open water events every year. We would like in the early months of the year, February, March, to have it in the Caribbean. And then in the later parts of the year, August through November, depending temperature, de depending on what the international ca calendar is at that point, have three other series in either Central or South America. Right now for 2023, we are still looking for the hosts for the later part of the year. For 2023, at the early months, we, we have um, confirmed that we will have um, Cayman Islands, March 3rd through 5th. Then we move to Jamaica, March 10th through 12th. And we finalize that first series in Puerto Rico, March 17th through 19th. The idea behind these water uh, open water series is to make it a point system of participation as well as placement and to have a financial um, bonus for the federations that are scoring points. Um, the second thing I would like to mention is that the event in Puerto Rico will be preceded by a camp run in collaboration with Pan Am Sports. You will fi find out more about that over the next couple of weeks, but that means that there will be financial assistance for junior athletes to participate in the camp and then the event that follows. For swimming, we will be having a event every year, a long course meters event. It will be senior event one year and then alternating with an age group, which we used to call obviously the Yuana Cup, very popular event, very well attended. Um, we changed the name, obviously it's not gonna continue as the Yuana Cup, but it will be the age group championship, which is next year in 2024. This year in May, three through seven, there will be a senior event in Lima, Peru. It will be prelims and finals, and it is a qualifier for FINA Junior Worlds, for the FINA World Championships, and most importantly, for the Pan American Games in Santiago. For water polo, we just had in Indianapolis our first um, senior event. Uh, I'm sorry, it was under 19. Um, and in April of 2023, Bauru Brazil will be hosting the under 17 championships as well as the senior championships. Just a little um, addition here. Every single water polo event that Pan Am Aquatics hosts is a qualifier for a FINA event of the following year. This event in Bauru, Brazil will also be the qualifying event for FINA's new cup. Uh, in, I guess it's called the, the, the Intercontinental Cup. There is a new name for it, but whatever the FINA event is, we will be the qualifying event here in Bauru. Then moving forward, 24 to 27, we will have the following championships that are listed, and all of those are still up for bid. Then the nice and the next new thing is the beach water polo. 
As you know, beach water polo is now an official discipline. Um, there will be a um, beach water polo component at the World Beach Games in September in Indonesia, in Bali. And FINA will have a qualifying event for that. But in our area, what we'd like to see happen is that we have two tournaments every year at different locations, which are um, going to be easy to access for the, the, that region. And then there will be like a championship that will have the best of those two tournaments meet each other for the championship. Um, this year, we are starting off with the March 16 through 19 in Puerto Rico, which is the same time as that um, open water event in Puerto Rico. And we hope that we can see a lot of clubs or if not national federations participate. Um, so that being said, we are looking for a lot of hosts. And at the end of this presentation, you will have an overview as when these bids are going to be done. So the second aspect of our focus is the resources for education and development of all of our stakeholders. Panam Aquatics has very slowly started adjusting the focus of the responsibility of the members of our discipline committees to be education and development of all of the aspects involved in developing a discipline. In order for your artistic swimming or your diving program or your water polo to grow, you need to pay attention to the athletes, you need to pay attention to the coaches, and you need to pay attention to the technical officials of that discipline. All three need to have opportunities for education and development. So Pan Am Aquatics wants its committees to address that. And as you know, in 2022, we have been able to put on a bunch of webinar series, and we hope that that will only grow more over the next couple of years. It is very important that the experts in each of the disciplines are as excited about it as we are. And if you are not on a committee, but if you are interested in helping us put these webinars on, please contact us because we are looking for people. You always have something that you can contribute. I'm convinced of that. We're very proud of our underwater chats. This is a um, event or an opportunity that was created by athletes. Um, Valerie Quest from Guatemala has been the key person in this um, endeavor. And we are so excited that along the way, more athletes have joined her, and we hope that this underwater series can continue to grow. Um, I know that they are currently looking to make it a podcast. Um, so if you have athletes that are interested in contributing, please make sure that you reach out. I would like to now turn it over to the FINA Development Office that is present with us today. We have the Education and Development Director, Vita Belsait from FINA present with us. And we also have the Senior Mar uh, Manager, Morgan Gaultier, who will be pres um, presenting to you all of the changes that Mr. Neuberger was already hinting towards. Um, I also saw that uh, Francesca Gang Gangami is on the call. So Francesca, I'm not forgetting you. I'm very happy you joined us as well. Um, Vita and Morgan, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Maureen. Uh, good uh, afternoon, good evening. Uh, it's really great to be with you here. Um, just to 
to give you some uh, a bit information about our department and how that works. So thank you for all of the introductions, Maureen. Um, so Morgan is our senior manager for development, uh, non-sports events, uh, masters, and uh, a lot of other things. So you'll be able to to reach out to her for a lot of questions that that we have. Um, I am the development manager for. Um, and education manager. And then Francesca is our coordinator who's responsible for coaches and, and coaching programs. So first of all, I would like to give the floor to Morgan. Thank you very much, Vida. Uh, good afternoon, I think, for almost all of you uh, in, uh, in America. Thank you very much for Francesca for being there. She is in, uh, in Europe, so middle of the night for her. So thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, with Vida, we are we are already in Melbourne, so so that's an easy easy schedule for us. Thank you very much for for being there, uh, as Vita mentioned, as Dale mentioned, and also thank you, Maureen, for for having us today. Um, the development department is a very important one for for Fina. Uh, Vita and I joined a few months ago, and we are really here for you for the National Federation. We are looking forward to meet as much as possible a lot of you here in Melbourne in person. But please never forget that we are here to help you. We are here to support you to make the necessary step to guide you in terms of scholarship, in terms of funding, in terms of schools, uh, whatever we are talking about, coaches, uh, officials. We are really here to support for any kind of question you may have. Uh, we it's nice that you can see a part of the team today and we really hope to to see you more and more in the coming months. We're going to organize few sessions in the coming months to explain you the different development programs. Uh, the idea is to create this constant link with you and making sure you know that you can reach us every time you need to. So really, uh, I think Maureen, and I'm sure Maureen got her email address, you also probably got it. Uh, every time you've got a question, we are we are here to to answer. So please do so. I think we'll go more in the detail of the different program we want to present you. We redesigned a bit the different program the last few months, so you will see and you probably receive already that there is some uh, new new pathway for schools, new pathway for coaches. Uh, you have may seen on the OASP submission that we add some KPIs, some objective, because we really want to follow up with you on where you are now and when you want to go tomorrow and to being able to support you in this entire process. So once again, whatever the question you have, you can always reach us. We, we are here for the National Federation. Vita, I let you the floor to present the different programs. Thank you, Morgana. I will just share my screen really quickly. Second, you it should be full screen. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, so, dear President Maureen, uh, dear Yvonne, uh, and really all of the representatives of the national federations, we are very happy to join you today. Um, and and we're very thankful for the for you being so active uh, with all of the development programs, as uh, Dale mentioned before. Um, I really want to thank uh, Pan Am for for a great communication and and all. The constant support and uh, it's been it's been great so far to to have this great cooperation uh with your continental association um just before i begin i also wanted to thank to all of the national federations for your patience as um morgan has told we we have we are reviewing the programs we are trying to look at the programs in the different in a different way to look for different angles to see how how the development programs really can be beneficial to the national federations and really bring the impact um, that is needed. So thank you for your patience during the, the last months. Uh, and, uh, and we will make sure that in the future we, we can support you more and that really we have a constant communication with you. This is a very important aspect for us. And and also, this is why we want to have this meeting with you in Melbourne with the ones who are present. I sent you an email today. I just have to clarify. It's not on the 14th of December. It's on the 13th of December. 
Um, so uh, just just uh, just to clarify, and I think I will send afterwards uh, uh, another email. But um, so we will have a meeting, a general and joint meeting together with you to to be a bit more maybe specific. Now I will try to be more general. And then what is more as well, the team is present on site. So if you have any questions, you can register to to meet with us or just catch us on, on the in the competition venue to if you have any questions or any discussions that you need to have with us. So we're here, um, we're present, and, and we really want to meet with you and, and have those uh, different discussions. So for the 2023, uh, the FINA Development Program, a lot of things you've seen already uh, within the guidelines that you received from us. And of course, um, there are a number of different programs. Um, and our, our goal here is to cooperate with you and with the Continental Federation Associations implementing different activities ranging from grassroots to elite um, athlete development. That's a really wide range of activities. Um, so how we uh, develop and how we divided our activities. So um, we are targeting obviously athletes through the scholarship programs, athletes entourage, that's technical officials, coaches, um, and aquatics managers, national federations, and worldwide society looking into the learn to swim and drowning prevention programs. Um, let me go really briefly through, through the programs that we will be offering next year and through the, deadline, through the deadlines and activities and our plans on how we want to build the programs together with you. So the FINA scholarships program is a really big program. Um, and we are looking at creating this uh, seasonal um, funding, I would say. So that would mean that the application period has changed a little bit. This is why you haven't received any information about the uh, scholarships programs. And we will start the application in April, 2023. Um, and the program, the scholarship program for all, um, actually four disciplines in this way, for swimming, open water swimming, and diving individual scholarships, and for artistic swimming, the team grants, will we'll start uh, from September. Why are we doing this as well? We need as well some time to review the criteria for the programs and for the allocation of the scholarships. Um, and for that, we think that we'll have meetings with you as well in April, 2023, to explain what were the decisions taken, how we discussed this with continental associations and with the coaches committee, um, just to make sure that, that the selection of athletes is, um, is the best um, that, we can, that we can do. In addition to that, you probably have heard already about the Stipendium Hungaricum Scholarship Program. That's the scholarship program in cooperation with the Hungarian government. Um, we started this program this year, and that's really an academic and sports scholarship program where athletes get to study in one of the Hungarian universities as well as train in Hungary in the world famous uh, Duna Arena. Um, and that is also um, a very similar application process. We think that we will start at the beginning of 2023. We need to just get some information from the Hungarian side. And then um, the study period will start in September 2023. Uh, what I want to mention is that I know that some of the federations, some of your athletes already tried to apply this year, is that it's very important that Obviously, the sports results are very important, but also the academic results are very important because, first of all, the selection process is done by FINA together with the national federations. And then on the second stage, the universities have some entrance exams uh, or interviews for athletes to attend different um, study programs. Therefore, the academic results are quite important here as well. Looking at athletes' entourage, um, you have been really actively applying to host different development courses, um, so development and certification courses. There are little, some small changes this year, but uh, I can assure you that we have been discussing all of those changes with, with um, technical committees, and, and really we are looking into strengthening the program for technical officials, and, and also looking for opportunities um, to work with you closer in developing um, the technical officials. What is very important to see or to say is that all of the programs now for technical officials, for coaches and aquatics managers as well, will be dedicated and we will target and try and organize regional and continental activities. That means that we will invite joint cooperation, what Maureen mentioned quite several times already, we will really encourage cooperation between the national federations to really join, uh, organize joint activities. As much as we want to support everybody's needs, 
and we know that you have a lot of needs. Um, we obviously have to understand that we have also limited resources. Therefore, um, we intend to help you develop your international officials uh, and then uh, who could eventually support the development of local officials um, in your countries. Looking at coaches certification program as well, uh, we are developing, we have now as an offering of swimming level one, two, and three, artistic swimming level one and two. Um, and one of the goals for our future is also developing coaches certification courses for other disciplines. So that's going to be a very important and long-term work and long-term program for FINA. Uh, talking about clinics for coaches, um, you have hosted quite a lot of clinics in the recent years as well, and you have been very active, which is amazing. Um, we have been discussing with the continental associations, and we really want to involve continental associations much more in the development program. What mean, which means that from 2023, um, the clinics for coaches will be organized with the, uh, through the continental associations. So FINA will attribute uh, funding to the continental associations and then everything, all of the clinics will be organized through the continental associations, applications, uh, plans, really strategic guidance on, on what kind of clinics could be organized and where that will be done by the Continental Associations. We really trust in the knowledge and experience of Continental Associations and understanding of the needs of their national federations. Looking at the Aquatics Manager Program, it started uh, quite some time ago, but due to the pandemic, it was, uh, it was paused. And we really want to restart this program in 2023 and um, offer opportunities for managers in aquatics and create a program that is really targeting the needs of aquatics managers. That's going to be an international program, and we will give you some news about it uh, next year. Looking at national federations, uh, you've all applied for the, the majority of you have applied for the aquatic support program. Uh, the title might change in, in the upcoming days as well with the, with the rebranding of uh, FINA. Mm, but this year, we changed a little bit the process, which meant that we did not have the brackets as we had in the previous years. You are all eligible to 25,000 uh, US dollars and also a possible bonus of 5,000 for the improved governance. As you can see, that governance, that good governance, the developments of different aspects of good governance remain a priority for FINA and, and they're very important. So. When you need any help or assistance, if you have any questions, really please contact us. Our colleague Sergio is now on the flight, therefore he could not really join us, but, but he's always open um, to give you solutions and, and also the whole team, uh, we, are, we are here to, to work together and to look for, for needed solutions um, for the development of good governance. In addition to that, some of your federations attended uh, this year the mentorship program and it has been a great experience. We, we're very happy with the participation and with the involvement of the national federations. So there are some federations who which really wanted to work on their governance. And we went through this six month process. We had a total of 10 national federations from, uh, from all continents. And uh, we work together to develop their strategic plans, the implementation of their plans, the action plans. Um, it was FINA, we had some cons consultants, but also the national federations. We, we think that we built this community together uh, in, in really, and we supported each other in, in moving forward. Um, so we will continue with this program in 2023. And, and we already have some interested uh, national federations as well from Pan Am. But uh, if you are interested, just please reach out um, and we hope that we will be able to accommodate your needs. Um, finally, talking about the national federations, it is the Pools for All program. Um, and um, the program has changed this year. This is what the president uh, presented in Budapest. And the program is really, go we are cooperating with our partner, with FINA partner Mirtha, to build one pool. Uh, to supply one pool, I would say, to a national federation per year. Um, the program has really changed from the previous year. And now we are su supplying the construction of the pool, but really uh, we're working with the national federations uh, for them to have the land, um, the funding, um, and the support from the government to really proceed with the construction of the, of the swimming pool. And when we talk about the swimming pool, it is a learn to swim um, swimming pool, a 25 meter 
uh, pool really designed for learn to swim programs and training and, and not competitions. When we talk about the worldwide programs and worldwide society, um, we have the Swim for All, Swim for Life and Swim for Health program, which is really under the review. In the upcoming years, we will concentrate a lot on the grassroots programs. And we know that some of you have been implementing amazing programs. Um, if you are open to sharing those programs, if you want to cooperate in developing a um, worldwide program, please feel free to reach out um, and to, to, discuss, uh, to discuss your experience and in your knowledge in this, in this area. Uh, finally, uh, sustainability is going to be a very important aspect for FINA as well in the future, um, and, and we, are, uh, under we are developing the, the FINA sustainability program, and we hope to have some news in 2023 for you as well. As you can see from everything that I've spoken now about, um, there's, a, there's little by little, we're bringing a lot of different changes, um, and we are very um, thankful for your engagement and involvement. And we really always want to hear from you. We want your, we really want to hear your opinion, um, your needs, and to understand where we can go together. This is uh, very important um, in building that community and really supporting each other um, and working together. Um, should you please let me know how much time still I have? <laughs> I have a little Just bit yeah just go ahead cuz after this it's we only have like a, like 10 more minutes so okay okay so i will just go because i really went into detail now presenting the general overview of the development program so i will just go uh really quickly through, through the things that you have seen already so you can give us maybe some questions and if you have any questions you can really um reach out so you have seen um the um, certification and development program for technical officials um, the se some, several things that have changed maybe in the course of, the, of this year and, and what changes we're planning is that we are setting up quotas for different, uh, for different disciplines. And in total, we will have around 80 courses. What is our plan for the future is that the courses that we commit to organizing, that we are really fulfilling our plans. Um, and, and we will really try and work hard uh, to make sure that all of the continents have uh, courses where they can attend, if it's not organized in their countries, that they could travel and, and attend those courses. Uh, so here, not a lot, of, uh, a lot of changes, but of course, everything is done and approved by the FINA Bureau, the technical committees, and we will work hard and we've been working with the continental associations to make sure that, that the needs are um, catered. In addition to that, uh, you've seen some different timelines and different 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 tables in the guidelines. Um, this is where we want to just make sure that all of the technical officials whom you submit to participate in different courses, they should already have some experience. Um, an experience in, in judging or officiating in your competitions, in regional competitions, because obviously when we talk about FINA uh, technical officials, this is the this is the pathway. Um, to become a, a FINA international technical official. So that means that um, all of the candidates and participants, they should have already some experience while taken on, on this journey. And then also there are quite some uh, needs. Uh, I hope that you, you looked at this, at this guidelines before and there are quite some needs for the organizers. So we have a, a minimum and maximum numbers of participants. We, for different disciplines, there are some needs uh, in, in facilities. Uh, and also for some disciplines, we can have also um, online courses. So sometimes that can be a really good opportunity uh, if you have, if there's a, if it is difficult to travel to one or another location. When we talk about the coaches program, uh, and as I mentioned, we will be working hard in this program in the upcoming months. Um, we will have around 37 courses in swimming and artistic swimming in 2023. Thank you for all of the applications. We really received them and, and we are reviewing them currently. Um, it's, this is the same thing. We think that all of those courses, coaches should have some experience already while attending those courses. And in addition to that, we think that regional initiatives are very welcomed. So if you join forces with other national federations, the, that is, this is great because then we can, can create a bigger impact. 
Um, and then, of course, for those level for different levels, there are quite some requirements. We think that the pathways are developed for for them to be followed. That means that if we start from if you we look at swimming or artistic swimming, obviously the coaches should start from our, from level one and then go to level two and level three because obviously a different experience is needed to be able to attend and to pass the courses. We're we, here. We're really concentrating on education and um, and and the development of of each um, expert and each coach. What is also very important that for what I did not mention with technical technical officials as well for development. If we are able to give and to sh uh, to provide a lecturer who speaks um, more languages or who speaks uh, maybe Spanish in the case uh, of uh, Americas. Um, we are happy to do that, but obviously, sometimes we might not find uh, the lecturers who could who are able to do that in one or another language. But of course, for certification, the priority is, and in the future, the more we will go, that it, the courses will be delivered in English because the certification it is a pathway, it is the way for international FINA events where at least a B2 level or intermediate level of English is is needed. And it's really the same for coaches. Um, as you can see, there are some different languages available. Um, but when we go, of course, to a senior coach level, for instance, in swimming level three, um, it would be great to have uh, coaches who are able to communicate in English and who could learn in English because uh, these courses then are uh, created for, um, for a group of countries who could join in together and also share the experience because always like in every learning process, it's not only about the lecturer who gives the, the knowledge, uh, but it's also about the sharing of the experience between the participants. And I mentioned already quite some information about the aquatic support program. Thank you to everyone who fulfilled uh, the forms. They have changed and Mar as Morgan mentioned, they might change a little bit in the future as well. But we're really looking to see at what kind of impact we are creating and we are making. And as you all have seen, we were also asking you to create at least one project that would be really targeting good governance. Um, and this year, you could lean on to the report of the good governance uh, survey that that you did, that you fulfilled, and see on wh what areas um, you could be working in. If you need any support in this, please do not hesitate to contact us. And um, yeah, so the mentorship program, I talked about this. Uh, we think that we will begin it in the, in the next year as well. Uh, we are finalizing, the final, we'll have it, we're having actually the final presentations here in, in Melbourne in a few days. Um, and really the program is built from of, um, mentoring the national federations, but also in, commun in communicating and working together in this group of national federations uh, to increase their um, potential to really work on on their uh, national federation and the governance of the national federations, and we have had quite a uh, great result so far, where we saw some national federations really taking the lead, um, not only among themselves, but but really taking the lead in their countries uh, by developing different um, different codes, uh, uh, working with athletes, working on safeguarding or or ethics. And that has been very, very, very inspiring. Pools for All program, uh, I mentioned to you already also about it. I think that this, we will be able to share this presentation after, after this meeting so that you can see the eligibility criteria, criteria and then you can contact us if you need um, any explanation. Finally, we have reached out to you uh, this summer. If you have any experts, if you have some people that also Maureen, I remember was mentioning before, if you have any experts who could really help and support the FINA development program, we are very open and actually we are very welcoming new people who could join um, this program. So the online form is still available and it's still open. So, and we really um, ask you to, to share the expertise and experience and support each other in, in, the, in developing and implementing the FINA development program. Finally, here you have all of the contacts from all of our team. Um, please do not hesitate to contact us. And um, 
yeah, it's great meeting you here online. Hopefully, I'll, we will see you here this week. Uh, if not, uh, if you need any information, please, we can just set up an online meeting and, and discuss all of the questions you have. And now I think that if you have any questions, we're here to answer. So Francesca is here as well for that. Uh, and, uh, and Morgan and myself as well. If you have any questions, please feel free. Thank you so much, uh, both Vita and Morgan for being here and for taking the time. Um, what I wanna do since we do have, um, we're already on an hour and I wanna not make this all too long. How about if you have a question specifically for the development, you put it in the chat or you email directly to us if you don't have Vita's um, email address. And also again, we will be meeting here in person on the 13th. Um, I believe it's at three o'clock. And you will have the opportunity to schedule private meetings with development as well. So don't be afraid if you didn't get your question in, we will be able to address it. Um, so I, I just wanna say, Again, there are so many programs and I understand that with so many programs comes the aspect of deadlines and getting the work done. But together with um, Yvonne's coordination of all of these items, I think we can really help you to meet the deadlines for everything. And the first year is always difficult, but um, I think that as all of this takes form, that it will become a much simpler in the future. So this brings us to the third and final aspect for us to address in creating a vibrant aquatic community. And that's the partners and network for collaboration. So obviously um, the network and the partnership between FINA, Pan Am Aquatics and you as national federations and the discipline committees, that's pretty straightforward. We have that. However, there is many other partnerships that are important. And at the same time, there's many more that we can create to help us in the future. Pan Am Aquatics is going to be very active in the development program in FINA. We want to identify the best locations to organize clinics and schools and certification programs. The better the location, the easier it is for all of you to get there. I understand very well that our continent is so big and it's uncomparable to, for example, Europe, where you can travel between countries very easily. We don't have that luxury. However, we have very good smaller areas that we need to exploit and have a working relationship between those countries, those national federations, to put on events. Uh, uh, other um, partners that we have been working with very closely besides FINA is Pan Am Sports and the United States Olympic Committee. So Pan Am Sports um, has a very um, nice bank account, which they are now investing in opportunities for athletes. And they have offered us the opportunity to create camps for development. We just finished an incredibly successful artistic swimming camp, which was at the USA Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. There were 17 countries, 40 athletes and 17 coaches present hosted by United States Artistic Swimming. Adam, thank you again for being part of this, um, this unique opportunity. And United States Olympic Committee um, provided room and board for all of those participants. And do the math in your head, that's a huge amount. Besides that, Pan Am Sports provided financial assistance for travel. There were five, uh, four 
incredibly known and capable experts um, on coaching level, world level, um, artistic swimming coaches that were there. And these athletes, these 40 athletes, um, just had an incredible experience for eight days. We're going to be putting on camps for diving in Mexico this February. We will have one for open water in Puerto Rico, and we are still looking for a location for swimming. So the relationship with Fluidra, you know, has gotten stronger since over the past three years. You now know personally what the faces are of Fluidra, and we hope that that relationship will only continue to grow. But then, and obviously also you have, um, um, have been informed already that we have a partnership with Hasty Awards, which has been bringing us beautiful medals for all of our events. But today we are very happy to announce that we have reached agreements with two new partners. Partnerships that will help us in putting on quality events, but also partnerships that will benefit you as a national federation and your members with excellent products at great rates. So I am very happy to announce today that Hercules, also known as Deporte Virtual, out of Colombia, will be managing all of the registration entries and results for our events. So basically the FINA GMS, which you are very comfortable with, we will have our own now for our future events. Um, but this partnership is also available to you. And then it's already revealed, we will um, be signing an agreement with Malmstam um, they obviously do not need an introduction. Momsen is the leading supplier of incredible equipment, racing lanes, water polo equipment. They have open water and beach water polo equipment and have been a trusted sponsor for FINA for many, many years. Um, joining us today from Arizona is Mr. Michael Orn, who is the CEO of the first and only Momsen affiliate in the Americas. Um, Michael, I am so happy to welcome you and I would like to invite you to introduce yourself and say something to our members present here today. Well, thank you very much for that. Uh, Momsen uh, has been a proud partner, as you said, with FINA for very many, many years. And we look forward to partner with uh, Pan American aquatics and support Pan American aquatics as well. Um, as you said, we just opened up a new uh, manufacturing and distribution center here in North America. I'm in Phoenix right now. Uh, with the presence on this continent, um, we are excited to partner with each of you of the Pan American <laughs> member federations and event hosts. So, I was impressed what you just uh, did over the last hour. Uh, we are we wish you the best success for all the development plans. My head is spinning just a little bit for all the work, but I am very excited about to partner with you on all the various aspects. Um, you said there was no introduction necessary for Momsen, but I will just point out that it's a, it's a family business, been around for about 50 years, manufacturing high-end aquatic competition and training equipment. Right now, we've just installed our Gold Pro Racing Lines in Melbourne, and we're looking forward to the FINA World Cup, uh, World Championship short course. Wish all your member swimmers best of luck at the, at the upcoming event. And we also look forward to partner with each one of you many successful events in the next few years here in the Americas as well. So thank you very much for welcoming us on board. Thank you, Michael. And Welcome to both Deporte Virtual and to Malmsten for becoming part of the Pan Am Aquatics uh, family. We are excited and we are convinced that this new partnership will grow into something fabulous for all of us. So that gets me to the end of the presentation, but I want to address this most important thing here. We need you. We need you because all of us, regardless where we come from, where what language we speak, um, what aquatic sport we participate in, we have one common goal. 
we want to create the best environment possible for our athletes of all levels, from grassroots to the elite. But in order for us to be successful, we need you to show up. And it is your responsibility as a national federation, as a leader in aquatics, to do everything you can to be informed. So like today, this meeting, I am so grateful to see that there is 19 national federations represented here. I am even happier to see a huge majority of our discipline committee members to be here at this meeting. That's the commitment we need. And obviously 19 out of 45 is still a long way to go. But we need to be excited and hopefully our excitement will get the others on board. I want to do a special shout out today because we have two new national federations who have been members of FINA for, for several years, but they were inactive. And they are now, since a couple of weeks, months, initiated the aquatic programs. Dominica and Belize, I welcome you to the aquatic, to the active aquatic family. And we cannot wait to see you in person at our events. So finally, we need your participation. We need you to share our weekly bulletins. You can find them on our website. It is every single event we have, every deadline is in that bulletin. So read it, look at it. Communicate with us. Let us know your status. Let us know what you need. If we don't hear from you, we, we can't help you. Participate in all of the opportunities that we have, both virtually and in person, especially the virtual ones. I hate what the pandemic did to all of us, but it also gave us virtual events. And we need to continue using those to the best of our ability. Dedicate, commit. And most importantly, support our events and support our partners. When FINA, and actually let me just start that sentence differently. FINA over the past two years has been doing a lot of um, work to get events to our continent. We know all know that five years ago, three years ago, 10 years ago, we barely were hosting any FINA events in the Americas. And FINA wants to change that. But the thing is, when we have a FINA event, we need to show up. We have to show FINA that we are excited that the event is in the Americas. And we need to be present. We need to have our athletes competing there. That's the only way we're gonna help the hosts and we're gonna help our region. So final deadlines or final slide. We have an incredibly important deadline for FINA development. Your OASPs need to be in by December 31st. Please, that gives you a little over two weeks. Get it done. The coaches clinics that are not going to go through FINA anymore, but will be, you know, coordinated by Panam Aquatics, we will send out a document for that this week, and we would like to have those in by January 15th. All of the available events, those are the deadlines right there. Again, thank you. Thank you, FINA Development, for being here. Thank you, National Federations. Thank you committee members. Thank you zone leadership that was here. I wish all of the athletes in Melbourne the best of luck. And I hope to see many of you here and if not here soon somewhere else in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you everyone for your participation. With this, we finish 
this presentation. And just a reminder that these documents are going to be available for you. The recording will be posted on YouTube, but we will send you an email with information where to find it. Same as this presentation itself, it's going to be uh, the information will be sent on a PDF and we will include all other information that you may potentially need, but we're here to help you anytime you need. Thank you again for your assistance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>